Welcome to our lab cast. My name is Josephine and today I'm going to share with you our new hourglass of emotions. Here we revisited and optimized the hourglass of emotion for polarity detections based on recent research in the field of sentiment analysis. As you may know, emotion has been an intriguing subject to talk about for many decades. In 1872, Charles Darwin was one of the first scientists to argue that all humans and even animals show emotion through remarkably similar behaviors. Since then, there has been a broad consensus on how and why emotion have evolved in many creatures. The definition and the categorization of emotions, however, have always been a big challenge for the research community. Our goal here is simply to review some of the most popular emotion models in the context of computer science and propose a new version of the hourglass of emotions. One of the earliest efforts in developing an emotion model was made by Schaeffers and colleagues. They have 135 emotion words across six basic emotions categories. Later, uh, Ertoni and colleagues argued against this concept of basic emotions. They proposed that all emotions are discrete, independent, and related to each other through a hierarchical structure. They classified emotion into 22 emotion types. The hierarchy contains three branches, namely the consequences of events, uh, actions of agents, and aspects of objects. They, um, this model is also, known, uh, is also known as the OCC model. And in, in 2009, Stoner Brink and colleagues extended this um, model to 24 emotion categories. Uh, another very popular model based on facial expression proposed by Edmund. This model consists of six emotions. Uh, and then Meherbian uh, proposed the Valence and Russell model, a more popular model in psychology that places specific emotion concepts in a circumflex model of core if effects uh, defined by two basic dimensions, arousal and valence. Among all of this, Eggman's model turned out to be one of the most used models for its simplicity and applicability. Many subsequent models are based on Eggman's model, such as the plastic wheels of emotions. Likewise, the Hourglass of Emotions, published in 2012, is a reinterpretation of the Plagic's model for sentiment analysis. Uh, recently, we revisit the model. Um, after almost a decade of using the Hourglass model in the context of sentiment analysis, we realized there are some issues with um, the old model. Um, so the first issue is the uncanny, uncanny color associations. Uh, it does not affect the accuracy of the sentiment analysis. However, we want to make sure a better distinction between different emotions. Um, let's take a look, for example, these two emotions, uh, disgust and sadness. They are both, both in purple. And then in line with the recent studies on the associations between colors and emotions, we changed their colors. Now disgust is in green and sadness is in blue. In general, uh, warm colors um, are for positive emotions and cold colors are for negative emotions. We also reorganize the models. So post positive emotions are now in the upper part of the hourglass where the negative ones are at the bottom. And then the next issue is the wrong association of antithetic emotions. One of the main advantages of having an emotion categorization model is to be able to classify unknown concepts based on known features. For example, if the model did not contain the emotion discomfort, it, can, it could look up its opposites, which is comfort, and flip its 
polarity to obtain the polarity of the unknown concept. Uh, in the previous model, this could not always be done. There is a wrong association of the antithetic emotions. Anger is on the opposite of uh, fear. In the new model, we revise them. Now calmness is on the opposite of anger. And then there are some absence of important emotions, absence of uh, polar emotions such as eagerness and calmness. And then um, all the concepts associated with such emotions, such as ambition, meditations, were going undetected by the old model and miscategorized as neutral. So in the new model, we include them in the hourglass of emotions. And then also the absence of self-conscious of moral emotions such as pride and shame. And the new model, we input them. Uh, and then they are now under the, the dimension of attitude. And then um, for the, this dimension, we also has the sub-dimensions of attitude towards self and towards others. And also there is a presence of neutral emotion in the old hourglass. Um, in Edmund's model, surprise is considered as one of the basic emotions. However, recently emotional researchers like Ortoni started to question whether surprise can, be, can even be considered as an emotion. Here, we do not want to debate whether surprise is an emotion or not but we definitely do not want it in our model. Um, that is catered for sentiment analysis, as this will lead to the wrong categorization of all concepts that are semantically associated with it. Uh, surprise, in fact, only become polar when coupled with positive and or negative emotion. For example, surprise uh, combined with pleasantness uh, will result in a positive uh, emotions such as amazement. Uh, meanwhile, surprise when combined with anger will result in negative emotion, uh, which is sh uh, uh, shock. And then the last one will be the low polarity scores for compound emotions. So in the old hourglass, uh, we use this formula to calculate the polarity scores. This uh, formula re resulted in a low polarity scores, especially for compound emotions. So there are some issues with it. So the first thing is that in this hourglass model, we want to make sure that the polarity values stay between minus one and plus one. That's why in the old, um, old hourglass model, we use a static normalization factor. Uh, this mm, resulted in the low score, low polarity score, and then a uh, concept with high intensity were not uh, the ones with the high emotional charge, but rather those that, are, that were associated with compound emotions because more dimensions active at the same time. So anger and fear uh, were resulted in the high intensity. And then the last one is that a negative concept associated with a strong emotion would not result in high polarity because its affective intensity would have been divided by three. Um, considering these three issues, we come, came up with the new formula. This we replace the old normalization factors with a new dynamic quantity that is directly proportional uh, to the number of active dimensions. So for this word, um, this, uh, um, this word is associated with the emotion of grief and activate the dimension, one dimension, which is the introspections. Uh, that's why the denominator of the 
polarity formula is equal to one and resulted in negative emotions. Meanwhile, the word love associated with two different emotions, the joy, uh, which has activated the dimension of introspections and pleasantness, which activated the dimension of attitude. So the denominator will be equal to two and resulted in positive emotion. And then we also conducted the evaluations for this new model. Um, this new model is tested against three sentiment benchmark. Um, the result shows that the new model uh, actually outperforms other models, including the all hourglass models. And then the uh, conclusions. Um, here we reviewed uh, major emotion models and proposed a new version of the hourglass model. We also show how this model represents affective states, both true levels and true for in independent but concomitant, concomitant affective dimensions. And the last one, we revamped the hourglass model. It now provides a better color representation of emotions. It excludes neutral emotions and includes some important polar emotions. It better categorized emotion in order to ensure the antithetic emotion are mirrored. And it calculates the polarity associated with natural language concepts with higher accuracy. And then in the future work, uh, we want to test the validity of the new hourglass model on different domains and different modalities. Besides that, we also want to develop mechanism to dynamically uh, customize the models according to different cultures, personalities, age group, sex, and uh, user preferences. That is all for this lab cast. And then for others, um, scientific resources, you can visit us on, in this, on these links. Thank you.